All right, so um, I was hoping some of the um, Oak Ridge folks would be able to join us, um, yeah, especially so. Addy, to talk about research on research software. Right, uh, and I just because... take a note for them on their on the Slack and about this. Okay. So I don't know if that'll prompt anybody or not, but I'm, I'm trying. All right. So this this uh, like uh, many meetings this week in the chaos community could be very short because uh, next week we're taking off and uh, already I think in the United States a lot of folks are already gone for the Fourth of July week. So uh, I don't have a ton, especially with uh, Oak Ridge folks not here because those are the ones I think who I think it was Addy in particular we were hoping could participate in this discussion because I think I recall from last time that um, we weren't sure if there was a really good venue for for this kind of work to talk about research on research software. Um, and the question is whether or not we need to search for a venue or identify one or create one to actually discuss this topic. Uh, academically. Yeah, I think I that's know. the reason I mentioned Mike last time was to kind of see what he thought as well, because he was leading these workshops that were called um, Collegeville. Collegeville? Um, yeah, I think Collegeville is like the town where the university that he teaches at, um, St. Uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, is, is located. S S oh, St. Cloud State, they have a good hockey team. Yeah, it's not St. Cloud State, this is... Uh, oh. There's, sorry, there's two Catholic universities, like one male and one female that are a couple miles apart, and he's at the male one, but I think they teach together in general. Anyhow, sorry, this is irrelevant, but anyhow, yeah. the place where he is, he he'd held a workshop about three summers, um, I think maybe all before COVID or maybe one was after. I, sorry, this is where I'm also getting a little bit unsure of my uh, memory, but anyhow, he was running workshops that were on this, and they would get uh, maybe... 50 or 60 people that would come and like stay in the dorms there for a week. And it's pretty nice. Oh. Should I, uh, should, should we reach out to Mike and ask him to join us at a future discussion? I think, yeah, I think that would be useful. Can you, um, either do that, Dan, or send me contact information and I can do it either way. I will do that. And I will, <clears throat> Uh, copy you on an email. Awesome. Yeah, certainly if somebody has gone down this road, it's way better to involve them than to try to create the wheel one more time. Yep. So putting a pin in, in that discussion item, the, the other thing that I want to mention is that uh, for OSS researchers, there's an open FE foundation that is holding their second annual open forum academy in November uh, on Harvard's campus, and there's a CFP. This time, unlike previous times where they've, I think, sought more technical content, they're really looking for practitioners, policymakers, um, to focus on social, political, and economic implications of open source, which I think connects pretty directly to the scientific open source software universe. And so I put a link in for that, uh, which is down there. And then a second reminder is that uh, there's a CFP for the Linux Foundation Member Summit, which is a very, um, it's a highly tuned audience where if uh, if you get to make a talk you're, you're talking with folks that members of the Linux Foundation have sent um, to a conference to represent them. And so it's, uh, you're getting a lot of, uh, it's not like a general population conference. It's more of a influencer conference within the Linux Foundation. So there's a, a little bit of privilege to the attendee profile that, that lets, lets the work presented there communicate more directly to the people who companies pay to participate in LF projects.
Yeah, so I thought I thought it would be useful to you know bring those to this group's attention to think about. I don't know if anyone has any ideas. They each each of these organizations, um, especially the LF Member Summit, looks for like I think some of the work that we're doing here could could be presented either in a panel, um, like a panel kind of conversation might be interesting in that in that uh, context only because. You know, obviously the LF does not focus, it does not center itself on uh, scientific software, but they're interested. Did submissions have to come from people within the Linux Foundation? Um, you know what, I don't know. I think if um, people, you know, I don't really know how the lines are drawn around quote unquote being in the Linux Foundation. So the chaos project is a Linux Foundation project and references to chaos, I think would be likely to grant the people who review these things uh, some degree of license to say that you're part of the Linux Foundation. I, I think it's likely that people who work for companies who pay money to be in the Linux Foundation uh, have a certain advantage in the submission of these proposals, but um, there's usually at least three or four chaos project talks that are accepted in this context. And uh, it's actually quite late in November this year, so I, th I think it might be a good year to submit whatever you want. Like this is like this is the week before Thanksgiving, so in some respect it's a little bit insanely late uh, yes. in november for a conference <laughs> thinking like oh man they uh they chose a week where there is no other conference fantastic but awesome <laughs> um yeah. so the reason i ask that is because uh with moss we're looking at one of our next steps is to bring in health metrics to try and visualize those uh in specific ways uh and i mean obviously we want to use what chaos is building here uh, to do that, to support that. Um, and I think Moss in general would be of interest to companies that work with open source and particularly if there's that health metrics angle to it. So like a submission might be if we can get sort of a proof of concept to pilot that visualizes health metrics across some open source research software uh, that might be pretty fun. We yeah. can make it interactive and engaging and and it hopefully gets the audience excited and gives everyone more money. <laughs> I mean, if uh, depending how you want to proceed, Jonathan, you could work this uh, if you want to work with this group. Great. Uh, or if uh, you want any assistance putting together something, let me know. Yeah, definitely. I don't know which, would this be a good group to go through it or would one of the other groups? I know there's, there's so many, there's the health metric specific group. <sighs> I mean, I think it depends on whether or not you're gonna focus on scientific software. Okay, yeah, I might uh, book you for some some talks. Oh, uh, Claire, Claire, whom I don't see in this call, but I, I expect uh, Inessa is possibly typing this. Sorry, it was, that was my mistake. I, I meant to uh, write Claude and I was just mistyping Claire, sorry. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, there is a Claire involved in uh, a different chaos group, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Are these from chat? Am I miss? I'm missing chat, aren't I? Yeah, these are in chat. It's yeah. yeah it's nice. I miss chat when I'm. Sometimes <laughs> I I fail to attend a chat when I am hosting because when I'm sharing, as you all know who view Zoom, you have to make special efforts to open chat. So.
So I'm just, I'm reading through this. Um, I, you know, personally, I would be interested in uh, a venue in Ireland or the RISA venue. Yeah, and uh, I will say on the RISA side, um, so Michelle has been talking to um, groups that are, that have been doing events related to research software. And there's, I don't know, some number of them. Um, and so she's investigating, kind of talking to them if they would want to try to come together and do something that would be a like a, a, a an international kind of main research software meeting that potentially could have different tracks or different sub areas. Um, the, this is under uh, Sloan funding that's basically giving us uh, us RISA the funding to do this investigation and do some planning, but wouldn't actually have funding to, to start an event. So it's um, it's investigatory only at this point, but. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I think Dan, um, we, we, my first thought would be to try to collaborate with one of these organizations, RISA or Ireland or both, and try to put together an event that is perhaps sponsored also by the IEEE or the ACM in order to um, try to draw some academic paper interest as well. I don't know what you think of that. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, it, this is it's one of these funny things where different parts of this have happened in different places with different audiences. It's funny, but it's also, I think, um, there's a, a little bit of missing the mark in, in my opinion. I suppose that uh, I, f I find uh, I don't I don't find an understanding of the importance of these questions <clears throat> in any current venue. So perhaps that's the reason why we're talking about a new one. Yeah, makes sense. I'm um, sorry, just to jump back to the uh, Open Forum Academy, uh, just to let you know that 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 week is the week of supercomputing, which is the, right, the big HPC conference annually. Um, so, uh, so you, I, I think those of us that are coming from the kind of academic lab side that are more HPC focused will be going to that. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that one is um, kind of in the middle of a few things in November. So that's, those are all the things that I had to talk about today. Um, uh, I'll look for your email, Dan, about uh, to Mike Haru and uh, perhaps after the holiday week, we'll get the, the Oak Ridge folks back on the call and uh, Addie and uh, I can participate in a discussion about uh, research on research software here. Yeah, I, uh, I did send a message to Mike and copied you and got a vacation message back that he would be out. Yeah, the, I think the first or something like that. So, yeah, it's that time of year. So, um, I mean, I don't need to, I could, we could hang out and talk some more, or uh, I could give everyone back half an hour of their time, whatever you all want to do. Well, yeah, it doesn't doesn't seem like we have anything else specific to talk about. So I, I don't today. Yeah. So I just sort of joined this group by happenstance because they looked interesting. So can somebody give me, you know, a five thousand foot view of, of what it is you've been doing, and kind of what what you're thinking going forward? In. I'll, I could give you my perspective, Claude, which is that the, to start with, the chaos project is focused on, you know, how do we measure the health and sustainability of open source software writ large? And this specific group is focused on that question for scientific software, which after a number of years of looking into open source health and sustainability, the chaos project, and I think many other folks, including Risa and other groups um, understand that 
scientific software's health and sustainability has a different instrumentation than the more corporatized universe that exists inside the Linux Foundation. Um, and the purpose of this group is to try to tease out what are the ways that we can understand health and sustainability in scientific software as an enterprise. And so there are, there are things that we take from the chaos project that are, I think, you know, kind of universally interesting uh, indicators like commits and number of people participating. And we, we try to mold that understanding into, well, how is this nuanced and different in the scientific case? Usually we see fewer committers, uh, less aggressive participation, lower activity. And so health and sustainability is just instrumented differently in this space than it is in a corporatized space where there's, you know, hundreds or thousands of people paid by corporations to contribute to a project. That's that's my 30,000 or 5,000 foot uh, explication I, of things. I don't know if that's, would, you know. I would say I would tend to agree with the uh, with the, the observation that there are fewer people, you know, that it is a radically different environment to work in. Um, but I wonder if you look at open source projects that don't have corporate funding, do those look like research projects? Right, so, so Claude, you um, you seem very soft now, even though I think earlier you were uh, more normal volume to me. So I, I'm having a little bit of difficulty uh, hearing. I what, yeah, I I don't think I turned anything down. Let me see if I can. Uh, Hey, so maybe I'll say just as a kind of partial answer that um, I, I think some of the difficulty here is that none of these categories are very uh, homogeneous. Um, so, right, so open source in general is not research software isn't either. So I think research software in particular has kind of the pretty wide range of things from uh, things like uh, well, like if, so, as long as we're thinking of like the Linux Foundation, uh, SPAC um, is an example of something that's kind of now under Linux Foundation. That's a HPC packaging software that has kind of a fair number of contributors and um, support from government, but also now some support from industry through a foundation. Um, and that industry support is partially in kind. Um, there's other research software that's pretty widely used like um, mpitch, which is a MPI library where it's open source, but almost all of the software is contributed by people at Argonne and almost all of the funding is DOE funding that's going to Argonne. Um, and then there's kind of on the other side, there's like really small projects, one person's library to do something where it's really just dependent on them. And there maybe aren't even a whole lot of users of it or other people. So I, I'm not sure that this is tremendously different than open source in general, but I, I think the biggest difference is that, and this is still a pretty vast generalization, is that research software is more likely to have um, people who are working on it who are in research institutions and more likely to have funding that's coming from uh, government or foundations and, and less likely to have people providing in-kind contributions from industry. But again, that's a vast overgeneralization. It's not, and I'll say as well, it's not even, um, there's not even a good distinction between the two. Um, so, like as a as an example of that, um, the LLVM, LLVM uh, folks, uh, compiler folks, um, or let's just say compilers in general, um, 
right? Compiler uh, like a C++ compiler or something like that is a uh, it's open source and not research software for people that are just using it, but for people in computer science that are doing work in that area, it's it is research software for them. Um, so there's kind of a weird context piece about when something's research software versus when it's just open source or when it's open source and not research software as well. Okay, sorry, that I think I'm kind of mumbling a bit now. No, no. But, uh... Those, I mean, the, the lack of a uh, very coherent or just clear distinction is worth worth noting. Right. I mean, okay, so maybe I will say one, one last thing is that um, a, a sign of research software is often that somebody wants to be cited. Because um, I don't think people in open source in general particularly care about their software being cited in academic papers. No, and academics do, of course, scientists do. Um, so if you uh, if you were to look on GitHub for a package that um, has on the left side a how to cite the software button that came from them putting a citation.cff file into their repository, that almost certainly is research software. But it's but it's uh, it doesn't go the other way around. If it doesn't have that, it doesn't mean it's not research software. Does that lend any help to your understanding of the group cloud? <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, I was just, you know, thinking in terms of how do you, how are you going to measure? What are you measuring? Um, you know, how do you how do you separate it from anything else? Yeah, I mean, at the at the end of the day, I think we're trying to understand probabilities associated with, you know, how likely is this potential software that I might use to be maintained by the people who created it or others. Right. Just to, uh, sorry, just to throw in one, uh, one example, if, if you go to the, the link that I just put in, um, you'll see on the, on the right side, uh, like the, so there's a site, this repository, it's like the, yeah, exactly that one. Um, and so the fact that that's there is because that citation.cff file is in the repository, and that's um, that is a uh, a flag that that this is research software. But again, doesn't doesn't work the other way around. Oops, I meant I guess I have to go back. I... Yeah. I shared the link to the founding doc for this group. Yeah. And I actually accidentally landed on it a few weeks ago. I was hoping to ask you, Sean, uh, how it, ha it, it hasn't been maintained for a while and some information is outdated. Uh, so I'm guessing you care to some degree that it, it is... Uh, up to date. Uh, yeah, I think in the case of this working group, we haven't really produced. We don't. We're not producing like what I would characterize as classic chaos artifacts, that that you know are like metrics or metrics models. I think we're more concerned about applying chaos metrics or understanding how to apply health and sustainability indicators to scientific enterprise software that's open source. Um, and so I think, I think we haven't referenced the repository very often because we're not producing things that necessarily are classic chaos and things to produce. Early on, we had this ambition and there were some attempts to develop new models. Uh, they didn't develop far enough to present to the general public. So, the question for you is like should should we spend some time on updating this dog or maybe i don't know take it down yeah i mean we 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 could do one or the other i don't 
you know, the people on the, I mean, what do others think? I'm not sure that, uh, I'm not sure if our enterprise here is the same as an ordinary chaos one. So I don't want to pigeonhole us into just going and producing chaos stuff when maybe our questions are different. I think generally it would be helpful to have some kind of readme for this group like to, mm -hmm. to Claude's question. We could direct Fox, new Fox to this page to let them know like, what we're working on, what we maybe produced, uh, the artifacts we produced. Also, Melissa hasn't been involved with the group for quite some time, so maybe we could update that information. And yeah. uh, if uh, there is somebody who would like to step up to leadership, that would be great. Yeah, I, I put this uh, in for the next time unless there's a desire to review it today. I wouldn't mind to work async on it. I personally yeah. would like to give a little more thought to Yeah. Which I'll make direction. a note in Slack about this as well. And everyone who's on the call, if you have ideas of uh, what we should put on this readme, please share on Slack and our channel. Oh, that's all I had uh, on this topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'll just say that I, I mean, I think the main point of that page is that it kind of, it has the contact stuff and points to this page, the Google Doc. And so I, maybe, maybe you just get rid of some of the stuff that's on there and just point directly to the Google Doc. Uh, sorry, the Zoom link's also wrong on there. I opened an issue in there saying that, but that's a different, that's uh, minor. Oh, okay. And then one, uh, maybe one, one last thing is that um, in, in some organizations that I'm in, uh, Research Data Alliance is one, there's two different concepts, one of working groups and one of interest groups. Mm -hmm. And working groups are groups that have a fixed term and are, have a deliverable. And interest groups are groups that don't have a fixed term and are just a place for people to come together and talk about things. And, and those interest groups then can create working groups when there's a need. And so I, I wonder if this is more like an interest group than a working group in some sense. And again, that that the terminology there may not make sense for chaos. So I don't, I don't know. But at least from a different organization, this I would see this as an interest group as opposed to a working group. I think that's. Uh, I'll bring that to the general community call um, in two weeks when it or twelve days when it occurs next on Tuesday after Fourth of July week. Dan, I think that's a really good question. And I think that distinction is one that may help make it more clear what some of these groups are about, because I, I think there are other groups inside chaos that really take this more interest group form that you describe where they don't have a time limited agenda. Um, the, I guess just yeah. to maybe just to throw one one more thing is like for RDA short term is eighteen months so I don't know exactly if that's short or not, um, but it's it's that, more the, that it's fixed term than than a short term fixed um, yeah fixed yeah the, uh, and then the other thing is that like USRSE the U S Research Software Engineering as a Engineer Association um, has working groups that are uh, that are ongoing working groups and and there the difference to some extent is that working groups are intended to do something and interest groups are just intended to talk. Um, so for example, there's a website working group, which is never going to go away, but it always has a job to do.
Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good discussion. I'll bring I'll bring this distinction question to the, the broader community as well. Thanks for thanks for organizing that, Dan. Anything else we want to bring up uh, while we're here talking or not? All right. I, uh, thanks, everybody. Um, talk to you uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks after the U.S. holiday. I know there's a big election in the U.K. for folks that live there. <laughs> so good luck with that. And uh, talk with you later. Bye. It was Bye. great to see everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.